Welcome back. In the last episode, we started our journey into React by hooking up the basic boilerplate for a React workflow. But our components require more than just basic HTML. They need a state that is maintained even during the hot reloading process. So let's finish off our new React workflow through the use of a cutting edge package, React Hot Loader. So let's create a new file. In source, let's create a file called counter.js. Now counter.js is going to be written in the React component class style. So we import React, and React has a function called component, which we can extend into the current class. Now this class will be exported upon definition. Every class needs a constructor. In React, the constructor receives some props. We immediately call super on those props so that React component can receive them. Now let's set up a state. In React, the state is just an object. We're going to give that object one property with one value. A counter needs a count. Okay, so the next function in the class is going to be our render function. Every render function is going to return some JSX. So let's return another h1. Let's include the state. Now let's import the counter into our app.js. And replace hello from React with our counter component. Notice the syntax I'm using. I'm importing a JavaScript object, but JSX requires that you surround these in brackets to indicate a kind of HTML feel to it. Since this is a, this is a self-closing component with no children, we're going to close it right here. All right, let's restart our server. You can see in our browser, we have our new counter component. If we change it, we can see our browser updates by refreshing. Now that's pretty cool. You can change the state, and you see the state changes. Now what if we wanted the user to update the state? Well, let's add an event handler. So we're going to surround our h1 with a div. We're going to give it an onClick prop. This onClick prop takes a function. Let's call this function climb. Now let's define the climb function right here. Climb is going to be called every time the user clicks. And climb is going to set the state of our component. And we give set state one argument, which is the new object. In this case, we want the state to update one from the current state. Okay, one last thing we have to do is we have to bind the proper scope. Every time we click, we want this to equal this. So state is maintained proper scope. If you don't understand that, that's fine. It's not necessarily important. The important thing to, to remember is that on events, we're going to want to bind the proper scope using the bind function. So we can see it's reloaded in our browser, and if we click, it updates. In our React Chrome extension, you can see that the state is also updated every time we click. Not bad. But what happens when, you, when we change it? You can see it returns to the initial state. It reloads all the code and returns to this initial state. That's not necessarily what we want. If we were, say, updating a drop-down menu, we'd want the menu to stay open if the state were open. We can continue to change its styles without having to, say, hover over the menu. So how do we pr preserve state on a reload? That's where React Hot Loader comes in. So back in our terminal, let's install React Hot Loader and make sure it's the latest one by doing at next. 
you're going to want 3.0 or above. Now in AppJS, let's import the React Hot Loader. We're importing one of its functions. This is a component called app container, and that's where the magic happens. So back in our render function, let's build this out a bit. We're going to surround our counter with app container. Next, let's abstract this render function out so it can accept any component. Now when we call it with counter, counter will become component, which will be rendered here. Now this step is important because next what we're going to do is we're going to add the code that allows the hot reloading to happen. App container adds a property to any incoming module as it's being loaded. That property is hot. So as app.js is reloaded, it's going to look at the module and see if there's a hot property on it. If there is, we want to call the function accept. We want to give it the component that we want to accept. In this case, we're going to give it counter.js. Then it takes a function. And this function is what's run if counter.js is the file we're accepting. This function dynamically requires counter.js. Because it's not ES6, it's going to require us to use default, since default is what we're exporting here. Now that we have our brand new updated counter, we're going to render that. So once again, if the module is coming in from a hot reload, it's going to have the accept function on it. If the module's name is counter.js, we're going to run this function, which re-requires the component and re-renders it up here. Now this might look a little squirrely, but I'll show you why it matters in a second. Finally, in our Babel RC, let's add one more plugin. Right after transform runtime, we're going to add the React Hot Loader Babel plugin. And in main.js, at the top, let's require React Hot Loader patch. Now this is the code that's going to be sent down to the client. And we'll accept and reload our component, maintaining the state. So let's go to shot. Looks good. We see that React Hot Loader patch is right here. All right, let's zoom in a little so we can see exactly what we're looking at. We can see our app container component, which is within it, has a state of count. OK, so we're going to watch our compile happen here as we change things. Let's change our CSS. Instant, no problem. Now let's change our counter component and see what happens. Instant, no reload. But what happens when we change the state? We're clicking on it, updating the state to 5. Now let's change it back. We can see that we've maintained the state of 5 while changing the overall component. Every time it reloads, it sends new hot update. With all the changes to our component. We can see the React Hot Loader at work right here. All right, pretty cool. So that's the starting point. Not too hard. You definitely don't have to understand every part of the React Hot Loader to get the benefits of using it. In this episode, we hooked up React and JSX into our Webpack setup. We then built a component that uses hot module reloading. We then used the Hot Reloader plugin to finish up our optimal developer setup by maintaining state within the component. If you need to catch up, this is the branch to check out. It contains the final code. Up next, we're going to revert back to the hookup branch so that we can show how EJS and other templating languages are easily incorporated into Webpack.